Hello, I'm Professor Tom Wolf, and this is an introduction to the Client Side Web Programming course. I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, the course, uh, how the flip pedagogy I'm going to be using works, grading, the deep dives. Uh, I'll talk about some resources. Uh, I don't think we'll talk about the survey in six nouns, though. So uh, I'm an associate professor uh, at the College of Education, Criminal Justice, and Health Services. I'm a Cincinnati native. I've lived here all my life. I have uh, bachelor's and master's degrees in computer science from here at UC. I'm really fond of web development and computer programming. I tend to teach the introductory coding courses, so CP 1 and 2, uh, Fundamentals of the Web, this course, Client Side, uh, a certificate course called Mobile Web Development, which is similar to Fundamentals and Client Side. I really enjoy teaching and learning. Uh, here's our dogs, Betty Davis there on the left and Errol Flynn on the right. You can tell which one's a scoundrel, right? Errol Flynn. <laughs> uh, a bit more about me, maybe more than you need to know. I can read Old Norse and Latin, a bunch of programming languages. Uh, one of my interests is cre creating uh, software for uh, helping people learn Old Norse and being able to read the saga literature in the original language. Uh, I'm very fond of blacksmithing. I make tools and weapons. Um, I like other kinds of crafts, woodworking, wood carving, wood turning. Uh, I'm a master knitter, very accomplished knitter. And I'm interested in K-12 computing instruction, computational linguistics, artificial intelligence, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I like to joke with people. I'm really fond of the Viking culture, and I kind of joke that I'm a Viking wizard. Uh, it preferred method for contacting me is email, tomwolf at uc.edu. Notice it's W-U-L-F. It's an old German spelling for wolf. Uh, the best way to do things is use the Blackboard email your instructor link because then I know uh, what course you're coming from and I know that you're a student. I tend to prioritize my mail. Uh, my office is in the Campus Rec Center in 4311B. I'm on Facebook. I always take friend requests from students. We also have a UC Infotech, UC Robotics, and a UC Women in Technology group there as well. And uh, I have most of my instructional videos, as I record them, they're in Blackboard, but then I uh, extract them and put them up on YouTube. And my username there is Tom Ulfer, O-U-L-F-R. That's the Old Norse word for wolf, by the way. Um, I enjoy teaching quite a bit. I want your feedback. I like to know what works and what doesn't. Uh, the goal here is that we all learn. To a certain extent, uh, stuff like grades and rules and things like that are just mechanical. Uh, I'm really more interested in you learn material and become accomplished and are able to do things. This course covers JavaScript programming uh, in an HTML5, CS3, and jQuery mobile context. So we'll be writing programs that run in the browser. That's what the client side means. Uh, we'll also be using the jQuery Foundation Library. We'll learn about form processing, uh, some advanced uh, Java Web 2 features, Ajax, JSON, XML data, and handling it with JavaScript. We'll look at how to program the Canvas, which is a graphics programming uh, capability that HTML5 now has. We'll look at some other HTML5 uh, capabilities like geolocation, the ability to create uh, cached browser apps that run when the uh, device is offline, uh, kind of related to that local storage. And then um, we'll do a fair amount with mobile web development with Apache Cordova. And I'm not sure if we'll get into this or not, but I'm hoping, since we're using the JavaScript here and the Cordova, to explore a little bit about how to do the Windows 8 storefront apps with JavaScript in Visual Studio. Uh, but I haven't done that yet, so I'm not sure. This time, I'm going to also provide you with the opportunity to do a deep dive in one advanced area. And um, I'll talk about that in a second. 
Uh, I'm also going to be using a flipped pedagogy. Uh, basically, a traditional pedagogy is you come to class for lecture and you go home and do your homework and your assignments outside of class. And a flipped pedagogy, you uh, see the lectures and the preparation outside of class, and then you do the hands-on when you come to class. So in particular, since we're only meeting once a week, we'll spend a lot of time uh, practicing coding. And I'll start right off doing that tonight. We'll set up some templates. We'll be using uh, the Sandbox with a uh, uh, eight, Windows 8.1 image that I created that's set up to do Cordova Apache development. And we'll be using the NetBeans ID. So I'll, we'll set up some templates tonight with NetBeans. Uh, so basically the way this works is you're supposed to review everything outside of class and come to class prepared uh, and then you'll practice the technology during the class session. Occasionally you'll have some work to complete outside of class and uh, just be realistic about it. If you come to class unprepared you're not going to be able to keep up and you're not going to learn the material. So you really do have to put in the work outside of class. I've got a bunch of video resources and things like that. I'll talk about those here in a moment. So each week you're going to prepare the material. Uh, you'll come to class and do the hands-on, which are practicums, labs, and assignments. At the end of the week, you'll do a weekly reflection posting. This is real simple. Just uh, three, three paragraphs telling me what you did, how the hands-on went, and uh, did you meet the learning goals. We'll do the deep dive. We won't start that probably for three or four weeks. I've got still got a lot of prep to do for that, but you can pick one topic area. Each area has three assignments and some additional work you have to do to prepare for them. Uh, you'll be able to get extra credit if you want to do deep dive assignments in addition to the topic area you pick. Uh, here's the grading scale, uh, communicatives, the weekly reflection, and the article reviews are 15%. I'll have you do three article reviews through the quarter, uh, uh, excuse me, the semester. And then all the hands-on work is worth 85%. Uh, really, as part of the basic coursework, you have to do the core work that everyone does in one of those deep dive areas. There's no midterm or final. Your grades based completely on the work that you do and your ability to do the coding. And so uh, there's no competition. I want you to help one another. Everyone can get an A. I'm not going to ever curve the class grades down. So um, that's something that I'd like you to do. We, I'd like to create a community of practice where we help one another learn the material because we'll all learn more. Uh, tentatively, here are the deep dive sequence options that I have. The first three are graphics. Canvas programming, which is bitmap graphics. SVG programming, which is an XML-based uh, uh, vector graphics system. And then uh, WebGL, which is actually a 3D uh, graphics system. And so all three of those are now supported by HTML5. Uh, another option would be a geolocation programming, uh, which would go further into the Google Map APIs. And then uh, I think I can provide an option for Angular JS, which is new MVC foundation library, uh, which some people find interesting. There's a new web programming language called Google Dart, and I know a bit about it. I can set up a deep dive sequence for you if you want to learn about that. Uh, probably be able to provide the PHP programming, which is actually server side programming. That'll be an introduction to that. And then CoffeeScript, which is another uh, metaprogramming uh, where you write the code in a high-level language. It gets compiled down to JavaScript. And then uh, I'm hoping the Windows 8 storefront app development uh, deep dive for that as well. So again, the idea here is I want you to learn this core material that everybody should learn. And then uh, I've got a bunch of additional stuff, and I couldn't really decide what to put in the course. And so I'm kind of letting you decide what your interest might lie in and what you'd like to explore. So I'm kind of going to try this. It's the first time. And uh, I hope that uh, you'll find it interesting and, uh, and stimulating for you. As I mentioned, we're going to be using the virtual sandbox. 
and I prepared a Windows 8.1 client image as NetBeans, Visual Studio, and the Apache Cordova development chains. Uh, and then the uh, CECH support text have added the usual software title, so it does have uh, Dreamweaver and the Adobe Suite. Uh, we're going to use NetBeans as our primary web editor, a JS editor. I've been using it for some time now. It's very good. I kind of switched from Dreamweaver, which is proprietary. You can get NetBeans for free. Uh, if you want to access the sandbox from home, you're going to use the VPN client to do that. The difference between the virtual lab and the sandbox is the sandbox persists. So anything that you save in the virtual lab will remain there, uh, excuse me, in the sandbox will remain there. When you go to the virtual lab, you get a fresh desktop, but it doesn't save anything. When you come back, it's fresh again. It seems like Firefox works a little better than the other browsers. Uh, this might not be an issue, though, uh, if you're using your own machine. There is a VMware browser plugin that you need to install, and it'll prompt you the first time that you go to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's the link to the sandbox. I also have it in Blackboard for you. Some resources for learning. Uh, we've got Modern JavaScript. That's the primary textbook. I have two Apache Cordova three titles by uh, Wargo. They're, all three books are on Safari Books Online, so you don't have to buy them. I have instructor presentations. <coughs> Excuse me. Which are in PowerPoint format. And then I have uh, some online tutorials you've probably seen before, the W3 Schools tutorials. Then I have uh, instructor videos that I've recorded, which are mostly hands-on. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And then we have uh, the Linda videos, which are available to UC students. And many of my students like the New Boston videos, which are available on YouTube and at this website, and they're free. Okay, I hope you enjoy the course.